Hello, welcome to Kamaya Tour Bells. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit more basic for the beginners and talk about uh, polygon components. So I'll go to create polygon primitives and we have lots of options here but I'll just choose a sphere. Hold down shift and click and drag and it will hit enter and you can create a sphere in your scene. So when you right click on the sphere, a marking menu appears and you have this radial menu and you can see the components of a sphere that you can choose to activate and go into component mode which allows you to select the components of the object. You'll see right now when I click on the sphere I select the entire sphere but if I want to manipulate the shape of the sphere and change it I'll have to manipulate the components. So right clicking on the sphere I can choose over here on the left I have vertex and a vertex is each point where these lines intersect in the geometry creates a vertex and you can select multiple vertices at once vertice being the plural of vertex if I go into a wireframe view by hitting the 4 key you can see all the, the uh, pink dots or red dots, however you want to describe them, turn yellow when they get selected. And then you can move those points around as a group or click and drag one individually, like so. And that is a vertex. And that's just simply a point where these poly polygonal lines or edges intersect. Speaking of edges, that's also a component you can select. If I right click on the sphere and choose edge, the dots disappear, but now I can select each individual line on the sphere and manipulate it. So I can select this line, it kind of highlights a orange color, and you can move it. You can also scale components or rotate them as you can any other object. If you double click an edge, double click, it'll select the entire row of edges until it hits a boundary. Like if this edge here was gone, if I hit delete key on the keyboard and say I'll delete this one too. So we have this one edge that's kind of separate from the rest of the loop. If I double click it, it'll only select itself because it doesn't have a row to connect to. If I double click this one over here, it'll select that entire row because it's they're all connected like that in a line until it hits this uh, boundary. Hold down shift and you can double click another row and it will add that row to your selection. So hold and shift you can add to your selection the components. And then I could, for example, scale them out. I right click on the polygon object again and I can choose go down I can choose face and the faces are the squares that these edges are bordering and you can see as I mouse over them they kind of highlight so I can click a face like this one and you can move it as a, as a whole or as a component of the sphere you can move it around and scale it and so on And like before, you can click and drag a bounding box around faces and select multiple at one time. I'll right click on my object again. So we've talked about edges, ver vertices or vertexes, and faces. Those are the main three components of the polygon object that are usually used when you're modeling or changing the shape of an object. Object mode right here simply takes us back to the object mode where we click on the sphere and select the entire sphere. So you have object mode, which is selecting the entire object, and then component mode, which is what we've been doing when you're selecting components. Right click again, we have vertex face. And when I do this, you'll see it kind of shatters the object where you can see each individual face. And this isn't actually too much of an editing mode. You can select uh, vertices and so on, but you can't really move them. What this is actually good for 
or in, in my experience anyway, is whenever you have an object that is acting strangely, where you have strange shading in the corners and such, you can do this to kind of separate all the faces and see if you have any uh, extra, extra faces lying around or doubled faces <clears throat> where you don't want them to be because that can sometimes uh, kind of mess up your rendering so if you break them all apart like this you can easily see where you have a mistake and then just right click and choose you know object mode and go back to normal and then we have multi when I select multi I can actually highlight a vertex, face, and edge all at the same time without having to right click and choose edge or vertex or face. I can just go to multi and I can shift select multiple faces, add in some edges and a couple of vertices to my selection all at the same time. Like so. And you can adjust them however you wish. So multi allows you to select multiple components, component types at the same time. So last in our component list is UV right here. If I select that you can see I can highlight what looks like vertices but instead of highlighting orange or yellow I should say they highlight green. And I've talked a little bit about UVs before in our uh, planar mapping video and I'm t I'll talk about them a lot in the future as well. But essentially what a UV is, is a texture coordinate on the object. And you can't actually manipulate them in this uh, component mode like this. UVs are actually manipulated in another window called the window. If we go to window, UV texture editor. I'll open this up. And this editor, I'm not going to get into in too much detail right now, but we'll have a video dedicated to it. But it actually displays the UVs of the object you have selected. So if I go to object mode and select my sphere, and or deselect my sphere, and you can see that the UV editor clears out. Select my sphere, now you can see all of these lines and squares and triangles appear. If you remember, those two edges I deleted are represented right here in the UV texture editor, like so. This, so you know this; these two spots are these two spots. So these UVs right here, these coordinates are where these UVs on the sphere on the left side of the screen are located. So again, like I said, I won't get into too much detail, but in here, in the UV Texture Editor, I can select the UV and move it. The point on the sphere won't move, but it will move the texture coordinates uh, of that vertex, of that UV, I mean, in the UV Texture Editor. So you can select multiple UVs and move them all at once, and adjust their positioning in the UV Texture Editor. So that's briefly what UVs are. Again, like I said, we'll talk more about them later. If you want to check out that planar mapping video, just click this icon on the right side of my of your screen here. And you can go check out check out that video where we talk more about UVs and textures and so on. But yeah, I pretty much think that's all the polygonal components that are in Maya you can mess with. Again, it's vertices for points, faces for the uh, squares and such that are make up, making up your object and then edges for each of these little lines and those are your com main components of a polygon so I hope you enjoyed the video I'll look forward to doing more soon hope you all had a good Thanksgiving holiday talk to you later